It was June 3, 1981, when a young girl disappeared from San Antonio, Texas. The next day, a body was found in Comal County, Texas, shot multiple times in the head, and her clothes were torn and removed. The victim's identification remained a mystery for 27 years, and the case continued for 42 years, when finally in 2023, the case reached its climax. What took so long for the case to reach its conclusion? Why was the victim not identified for so long? Welcome back to the Cold Case Files, where we bring you the stories of the most notorious cold cases in history. Today, we will be highlighting a 42-year-long cold case of a young girl from Texas who disappeared in 1981. Before starting, we would like you to take a moment of your time and hit the like and subscribe button. Also press the bell icon to be the first to discover all the new cold cases. Now, let's take a walk through this atrocious cold case. San Antonio is the seventh populous city in the United States and the twelfth most populous city in all of North America. It is also the seventh largest city in the U.S. The most traveled city in Texas, San Antonio, is the home to a rich colonial heritage, attracting tourists from around the globe. Places like the Alamo, the Riverwalk, and the San Antonio Mission's National Historic Park enhance the beauty of heritage in this once Spanish colonial city. It is also a very affordable city, which makes it one of the most family-friendly places in all of the U.S. Who knew that the bright city of San Antonio has a darker side? The city of San Antonio was ground zero to many crimes in the 1970s and 80s, and this cold case also belongs to the series of unfortunate things that happened in those days. On June 4, 1981, a partially clothed body of a young girl of about 17 to 20 years of age was found seven miles south of North Braunfels, between the northbound access road and Interstate 35 in Texas. On examining the battered body of the young girl, it was understood that she was strangled and was shot six times by a 25 caliber pistol to her head. 25 caliber pistols are very small and can fit in the palm of the hand. The unidentified girl was found to be around 5 foot 3 inches tall and weighing about 118 pounds. With only this much to work with, police set off to try and identify the victim. The cause of death was not confirmed initially, but according to Como County Justice of Peace R.G. Blanchard, the girl died due to the gunshots and not because of the strangling. The girl's clothing was missing from the scene, and she was left only with a multicolored blouse, white socks, and her bra pulled behind the neck. Although the preliminary test said that she was not violated, the investigators believed otherwise. According to them, the victim's body showed all the signs of being harassed and violated and it was understood that she might have fought back for her life. One of the gunshots were right above the right eye, and the other five times were shot above and behind the right ear. No weapons were found at the crime scene, and from observing the crime scene, the police believed that she had been killed somewhere else and then dumped on the roadside. The Como County Sheriff's Department appealed for help in identifying the victim but didn't receive anything useful. From the very onset of the case, the priority was to identify the young victim. In order to get some proper identification, DNA was collected from the victim's fingernails, and a drawing of her face was printed on posters which were spread throughout the city. Even after thoroughly continuing the search for her identification, the police got no results, as none of the people in the area, or even from the nearby locations, knew anything about the girl, and didn't recognize her from the poster. Furthermore, her DNA sample could not be used to identify her, as at the time, DNA testing was not used widely, and the identity of the girl remained unknown, making the case critical. 
It was saddening for the officials that she had to be buried in New Brunfels Cemetery, Texas, as a Jane Doe, and not with her true identity. According to the police's hypothesis, the young victim was abducted and forced into intercourse. When she fought back, she was choked and shot. Then her body was left for dead on the I-35 near New Braunfels, Texas. However, no hard proof or any kind of evidence was there to support their assumption. Interstate 35 in Texas was a crime hotspot between 1976 and 1981. It was the hunting ground for a killer, or killers, who preyed on hitchhikers and motorists in trouble, claiming at least 22 victims in five years. And this young girl's case was included among them. The first suspect was a serial killer named Henry Lee Lucas, who was at large and was accused of murdering many people during those years. Two years after the incident, in 1983, Lucas was arrested, and he confessed to the killing of the young girl. He, along with another serial killer named Otis Toole, confessed to many murders which happened during that time period. Lucas was sentenced to death on conviction for another homicide case, but subsequent renunciation of the Lucas confessions in 1985, returned several cases to the unsolved column, the unidentified girl's case being one of them. After finding Lucas not guilty of the girl's murder in 1981, the investigations resumed, but to no avail. Her identity was not known, and pursuing the case was getting more difficult. The investigation continued for years, but without the identification of the victim, it was hard for the investigators to pursue the case and find the culprit. There were so many mysteries left for the Comal County Sheriff's Department to unravel, but they had no real clues or leads to follow. All they had was the victim's DNA, a picture, and the location where she was left for dead. Even on interviewing people around the area, they came up with zero explanations as to what might have happened the case started to look bleak, and hopes were fading away. Soon the case went cold, despite the investigation remaining open. After almost three decades of the case remaining cold, the Texas Rangers Unsolved Crimes Investigation Program revisited the case in 2008. On going through some missing reports, they found a missing person report that matched the description of the victim from the 1981 time frame. The Texas Rangers then met with the family who filed the missing persons report. The person who filed the report was Sandra De Leon, who resided in the West Avenue area of San Antonio. On showing the victim's profile, Sandra and her family immediately recognized the 18-year-old girl. According to them, she was Carol, Sandra's elder sister. With this statement, the police finally had a new hope, and after further family DNA testing, her identity was confirmed after 27 years of being labeled as Jane Doe. She was officially identified as Carol Joyce De Leon in 2009. Carol Joyce De Leon was born on February 18, 1963 in Bexar County, Texas, USA, in the house of Rodolfo De Leon and Ramona Vara. She had a younger sister named Sandra, with whom she grew up. However, not much information about her family is available. She resided in the West Avenue area of San Antonio, Texas. On May 28, 1981, Carol graduated from Thomas Edison High School, just a few days before her unfortunate demise. Carol, after graduating from high school, had a lot of free time on her hands. She felt that it was time for her to live on her own and start her independent life. She discussed her plans with her family, with whom she was living at the time, telling them that she would like to move out and start life on her own now that she had turned 18. And her loving family agreed to it. When asked about Carol's whereabouts on the day of the incident, her family said they thought Carol had gone out with her friends to spend the evening with them. 
When police asked Carol's family about why they didn't file a missing persons report after Carol didn't come back, they replied that Carol had discussed her living arrangements with them and that she would be moving out when she was 18. So they assumed that Carol did just that. But when they heard nothing from Carol for so many years, Sandra, Carol's sister, filed the missing person report in 2007. Later on, while investigating the case and interrogating people who had known Carol, they found out that she had attended a nightclub in San Antonio on June 3, 1981. No one saw Carol after that, so it was strongly believed by the police that Carol went missing just after she left that nightclub. Although the case had gone cold during those 26 years, from 1983 to 2009, the police department now had a new technology in the field of DNA testing, and this provided a breakthrough by providing them with an unknown sample of DNA, which was developed in 2010 from the victim's body. Was this foreign DNA profile that of her killers? The new DNA sample was entered into CODIS, or Combined DNA Index System, but no matches were found according to the Texas Department of Public Safety. The investigators posted information on many websites and forums to contact the Texas Rangers if someone knew about the case. A photograph of Carol and a male subject was posted by investigators on the Texas DPS website. It was thanks to the public's assistance the male subject was identified and dismissed as a suspect by investigators. However, his name was never made public. Failing to find any suspects, the progress again became stagnant, and the case went cold again for the next eight years from 2011 to 2019. In 2019, investigators reportedly collected another sample of DNA which was used to perform genetic genealogy testing that identified three persons of interest. In 2020, advanced DNA testing under the Saki program was performed, which was funded by the Department of Justice. Through this DNA test, two of the suspects police had their eyes on were cleared and were no longer part of the case. On further examination of DNA through the normal forensic testing, it led them to a positive match, 68-year-old Larry Allen West. In November 2021, Investigators interviewed Larry Allen West at his workplace. He reportedly told officials he frequented bars in the area and would pick up younger women, but he denied knowing anything about Carol. He also provided a DNA sample. And in March 2023, investigators concluded West's DNA was the closest match to what detectives found on De Leon's body. During interviews with West's ex-wives, the women told authorities that West was violent, and one of his ex-wives recounted that West allegedly assaulted and forced her into intercourse during their brief 30-day marriage. After three years of accusation and investigations using modern sciences, on June 13, 2023, Larry West was arrested by the police and was booked into the Bexar County Jail on a $125,000 bond. However, West paid the sum of money and was released on Friday, January 14, 2023. West is due back in court in May 2023 for a pretrial hearing. So, according to you, was West the one who brutally murdered Carol on that unfortunate day? Do you think he will be brought to justice? Even if the DNA evidence points to him in the eyes of the law, a person is innocent until proven guilty. Till then, Carol will surely have to wait for her justice as she rests under her tombstone, which finally has a name on it. Share your opinions in the comments section, and don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. Please subscribe to our channel where we will bring you more cold cases and discuss everything in detail with you. Stay tuned to Cold Case Files for more content.